Hello once again and welcome to our latest service. We've come together to worship our God and these verses from Psalm 103 tell us a little bit about him. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. These verses express his great love for us and his forgiveness and how he then forgets our sin. Our first hymn echoes those themes of love and forgiveness in the first verse, stating that we are ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. Let's sing, praise my soul, the King of heaven. let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you that we can call you Father and talk to you anywhere, anytime, about anything. Praise you for this beautiful world which is bursting into life. We praise you and thank you for your constant presence, care and provision for us and all your many blessings. We hear of wars and rumours of wars, conflicts and persecutions across our world. O oh, Father, we long for peace and pray that national leaders across the world would work for peace and that governments would allow people of different faiths to live together in harmony. Many in our world go hungry, are homeless or are refugees and we ask that these people receive the help, compassion and support that they need. 
Amen. And we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen we haven't had a poem for a long time and I found this one in a book given to me by my sister, oh, many years ago. And it's by Annie Johnson Flint. God hath not promised skies always blue, flower strewn pathways all our lives through. God hath not promised sun without rain, joy without sorrow peace without pain but God has promised strength for today rest for our labor light for the way grace for the trials help from above unfailing sympathy undying love that's really why we bring our worries and concerns to God in prayer, because he loves us and cares for us. A hymn we haven't sung in a while is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. So we're going to sing it now. Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 to 11. 
Jesus had just been baptised in the River Jordan by his cousin John. And the reading describes some of the trials and temptations he experienced following his baptism. So we've suddenly moved from Jesus as a baby to Jesus as a man about 30 years old, from the season of Epiphany to the season of Lent. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. Thanks, Steve. I've been turning out. <clears throat> We've got the decorator coming soon, so the spare bedroom has to be emptied and made ready for him. It's so useful to have a spare room so that when you don't know where to put something, you pop it in there. Then comes the time of reckoning, the time when it has to be sorted out. I'm actually having a marvellous time because I've got the time to do it. There are books to be gone through, hundreds of photos, knitting balls, sewing things, etc, etc. Lots of things that might come in useful one day. Some things are okay to keep, others must be got rid of. Sometimes there are things in our lives that have to be got rid of too. We harbour wrong thoughts, do wrong things. The Bible calls it sin. Sometimes we bear grudges or hang on to bitterness. And these things need to be turned out, got rid of. We're all tempted to sin in one way or another. And it's helpful to know that Jesus was tempted too. In fact, the Bible says he was tempted in every way as we are. <clears throat> There's one big difference. Jesus always resisted temptation and never sinned. We, I, often succumb. Jesus had been in the wilderness fasting for 40 days, hungry, alone, when the devil tempted him. And he set us an example of how to resist by turning to the word of God for help each time. Sometimes we're too late and we've already put our foot in it, said or done the wrong thing. But there is still hope and help for us because we know that if we truly confess our sin, God will forgive us so we can be rid of it. In fact, we heard earlier that as far as the east is from the west, so far does God remove the sins of those who truly repent. It's good every now and again to have a clear out 
and make sure there's nothing lurking in our hearts that needs to be got rid of. No matter how long it's been there or what it is. God won't be shocked and will help us sort it out. And the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But we have to ask him. Let's spend a few moments to reflect and see if there is anything specific we need to be rid of. Then we'll pray together. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, I am sorry for the times when I've been hasty or unkind, thought or acted foolishly, failed to forgive or ask forgiveness, forgotten your presence, taken your love for granted. I thank you for your promise to forgive all those who turn back to you in penitence and I ask your forgiveness now. Amen. Our next and final hymn reminds us of God's constant presence, forgiveness and peace. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. to leave you with those lovely verses from Psalm 103 which we began with. For as high as the heavens are above the earth so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west so far does he remove our transgressions from us. Two verses that are well worth learning and remembering. Mind you, I do struggle to memorise things these days, but I still try. Before we go, let's bless each other by saying the grace together. And then we'll see you again next time. May, May the, the grace, grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ 
and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Bye. Bye. See you next time. See you.